Monday afternoon, May 13th, 2024. Best pitcher of the year, 1910. The greatest pitcher of all time. Number one in my book. Walter Johnson, 1910. He won four pitching categories out of nine. Most innings, 370. Most strikeouts, 313. Most games started, 42. And complete games, 38. Four categories, Walter Johnson. Why is he the greatest pitcher of all time in my book? Better than Cy Young. Better than Christy Mathewson. Better than Pete Alexander. Better than Warren Spahn. Sandy Koufax. Bob Feller. Carl Hubble. Mordecai Brown. All those guys. But Calvin. Kid Nichols. Tim Keefe. All the ones I've mentioned in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Why is he number one? Let's look at his Overall career, 417 wins. And he could have had more, but he played for a last place team a lot. He did win their de the pennant twice and won the World Series once. But the Washington Senators, a lot of times, lost a lot of games. They just did not have enough players. But Walter Johnson still won 417 games. He lost 279, which is kind of high. I don't like all those losses. But this guy was incredible. 5,914 innings in 21 years. 802 games he appeared in. Started 666 and finished 531. I, I, I believe he has the most one nothing games, whether it, whether it was a win or a loss. one nothing. Either he won it one nothing or lost it one nothing. He has 110 career shutouts. Nobody else has over 100. Some guys below that. He has 3,509 strikeouts, which was a record for many, many years until other guys passed him. Those in the 3,000 club, 4,000 club, and of course, Niall and Ryan, the 5,000 club. This is the stat I like. 2.17 career ERA. And here's another stat. He won 20 or more games. I'm going to count it. 1, 2, 3. All right, 20 or more. Not 30 or more. Just 20 or more. Finished with a record of 20 and something. I'm not counting the 30 wins. 20 wins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 win seasons. And to go along with that, two 30 win seasons. His high was 36 wins. He had a 33 win season. Double digit wins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 seasons out of 21, double digit wins. He had one season where he was a 1.14 ERA. 1.14? He had 300 strikeouts in a season, one, two times. Then he had 200 or more, one, two, three, four, four times. Ends up with 3,509. What else can you say about this guy, Walter Johnson? 
if he had played, supposedly, for a winning ball club like the Boston Red Sox or the New York Yankees, imagine him on the New York Yankees, or even the St. Louis Cardinals back in the day, It is, or the New York Giants. It is possible that Warren or Walter Johnson would have the most career victories, even more than Cy Young. He has 279 defeats. If he, let's say he's on a winning ball club who's winning the pennant or close second, third place, not last place. He could have had 100 or more victories, and that would have given him 517. Cy Young had 511. Now, you would say, was Cy Young on a winning ball club? Yes, Boston Red Sox. And the Cleveland Spiders. I don't know. I think Waller Johnson is number one in my book. Because of the 400 wins... Because of the 2.17 career ERA, 531 complete games, 110 shutouts, and 3,509 strikeouts. And, how about this, 34 saves. He was just a guy you can call on to give you results. It's just too bad that the team he played for, the Washington Senators... He stuck with him the whole time. Only twice did they win the pennant. 1924 and 25. And they won the whole thing in 1924. Walter Johnson for the year 1910. 25 and 17. 1.36 ERA. 42 starts, 38 complete games, 370 innings, and he gets 313 strikeouts. My book, Baseball Hall of Fame, and number one greatest pitcher of all time. Now, you may say he pitched from 1907 to 1927. That's a different era than today's pitchers. Would you say that no one, that Walter Johnson is better than Nolan Ryan. Yes. Because of the victories and the ERA. And the complete games. And he doesn't match Nolan Ryan in strikeouts. Would you say he's better than Sandy Colfax? Yes. Would you be say that Walter Johnson is better than Cy Young? Yes. Cy Young had 511 wins, but he had over 300 losses. So did Putt Calvin. But Calvin had over 300 losses. Now, Walter Johnson had 279 losses. Just think, if a lot of, the, probably a lot of those games, he could have won if his ball club was just a little bit better. That's, it's, it's a fact. You got to look at the Washington Senators' record. You want me to do that? You want me to look up the Washington Senators' record every year? That he played. 1907, they finished eighth. 1909, they finished seventh. No, 1908, they finished seventh. 1907, eighth. 1908, seventh. 1909, 8th, 1910, 7th, 1911, 7th, 1912, 12, they finished 2nd. They finished 2nd in 1912, okay. Remember, no, Walter Johnson pitched from 1907 to 1927. 1914, they finished 2nd. Okay, two years in a row, second. 
1915, third. 1916, fourth. See, they're not winning the pennant. 1916, seventh. 1918, no, 1917, fifth. 1918, third. 1919, seventh. 1926, 1921, fourth, 1922, sixth, 1923, fourth, 1924, first, and they won the World Series. 1925, first, but they lost the World Series. Two pennants. 1926, fourth, and his last year he finished third. So a lot of sevens, eighths, sixes, fifths, fourth, third, couple seconds here and there, couple firsts. What's my point? My point is he did not play for a winning ball club for the majority of his career. He played for either some bad clubs because of the seventh and eighth place finishes. Some mediocre teams where they finished third or fourth. It's a little better teams with a couple seconds and a couple of first. But the majority of his career was poor teams. Yet he wins 417 games. That's why in my book, Walter Johnson ranked number one. And for the year 1910, I'm giving him the best pitcher in the league, combining all of them from the National and American Leagues. Okay. Walter Johnson. 1911 is next. We'll continue with the, vi the videos analyzing the best pitchers from each individual year between 1871 and 2023. 20, 1910, Walter Johnson. I am out.